My name is Elizabeth, and this is Remembering You. Inside of this miraculous body, you were carefully made. First, you were the size of a poppy seed, and before I knew it, you decided you were ready to make your entrance into this world, and you've grown to the size of a small pumpkin. Amazed, I stared at you for days. I cried and smiled because I was finally able to see you and feel you. You were so fragile, and at that moment, everything changed. You were my everything. The feeling was unexplainable, and the love was unmeasurable. I just knew I always wanted to hold and nurture you. As time flew by, there were countless sleepless nights, and there were times I would cry because there you were, so helpless and so vulnerable to the world. You quickly grew up and were mumbling dada and mama (laughs) and tripped and fell so many times but you pushed through and learned to say i love you and walked like a champion i was so proud my baby was growing up we danced we played and there were plenty of times i had to take the cookies away those were the easy days watching you holding you and kissing the boo-boos away Then came that dreaded day, the day you were taken away. I cried and screamed. It felt like the breath was knocked out of me. Hearing those words, those words confirming that you are truly gone. In a blink of an eye, you were here and then you were gone, back with your papa in heaven. I didn't understand, I couldn't comprehend why my child was taken away. You passed away and as we closed your casket, I pictured how your life was supposed to be and how this reality shouldn't be. You were supposed to be here, safe with me. I did everything right, but yet, there you lay. As time went by, I was conflicted and in pain. You weren't here, and a part of me wasn't either. Fast forward to today, I remember the days when I first felt you kick, when I first heard you cry. I remember holding you and kicking the monsters away. Never did I know that that morning would be our final goodbye. I replay the videos of your smiling face because it helps me get through some days, but still, nothing was ever the same. I love you now like I loved you then, and I find peace in knowing that I will see your smiling face someday soon again. Thank you for tuning in to Uncommon Women. I'm your host, Shanira. Today we are on episode 33 and we'll be speaking on losing a child. We have a guest speaker by the name of Ken Milborn, a God-fearing woman, mother of three, born and raised in Chester County. She's currently a counselor at Girls Club and she's involved in the youth ministry in Treasury. So today she's going to give a little of her testimony of how she lost her child. Uh, But before we get into that, Kim, thank you for coming out today, and how was your life growing up? Oh, uh, thank you for having me, and um, my life growing up was, um, I had a two-parent household. My father worked two full-time jobs most of the time, and my mother was a stay-at-home mother, uh, which is uncommon these days, and um, so I have it was five of us. Mm-hmm. I have an older sister, Minister Cheryl Wilson. Mm-hmm. I have two twin brothers, um, Tracy and Troy, and a younger brother, Richard Jr. And it was five of us. And our household was kind of, well, we lived in the projects. Mm-hmm. But it didn't seem like it was a project because it was it was called Parkway in Coastville. Mm-hmm. So they're calling them condominiums now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we lived. And we lived in, an, I would say, a nice community. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't look like regular projects. Didn't look like Oak Street. Mm-hmm. Didn't look like, you know, projects when you go to other cities. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like a single home. And okay. we had a backyard with a patio, you know, on the right sidewalk. So coming up, we had, you know... You go up with your friends every day. You know, you go Mm -hmm. outside and you play, you know, with your friends every day. So, you know, besides the 
you know, dysfunctions of a household, you know what I mean? Like, people having their problems. It wasn't that bad. My dad, I was a, a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I wasn't selfish with it because my father, it wasn't a lot of fathers in the houses mm -hmm. up Parkway, in the homes up Parkway. Mm -hmm. So what my father would do, would, we, we always had station wagons. Mm -hmm. So what my father would do was the kids that he seen that didn't get to go anywhere, he would pile them up in his station wagon. Uh -huh. If it was only for a ride, pile them up and take them to the drive-in movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I think, I think that the people at the drive-in movies knew what was going on. <laughs> because he used to um, pile them in the back, make them lay down, pay for the couple people up front, and get them in, you know, and get them in free. <laughs> and that's how some of them got to see drive-in movies. Mm -hmm. That's how some of them, some of the young men went fishing. Mm -hmm. That's how, you know, some of them learned how to work on cars, learned, you know. My dad was always hands-on, mm -hmm. you know, with a little bit of time that he had to share with us working two part-time jobs. I mean, two full-time jobs. But you would have never knew it. We just knew that we just knew that he was only home for eight hours. So, so your father typically was the father figure for those that didn't have fathers in the household. Right. He stepped up. That's yep. that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And my mom, she babysit it. So it was always she she always did um child care. Mm -hmm. You know, she did child care till she was eighty years old. So wow. yeah. So she's um babysit a lot of the children in Coatesville and they still honor her with that. They still take care of her from that. That's good. That's good. So before we get into, you know, what happened of the situation, you have three children. How was your life raising the three children? Uh, what was your day to day life with three children? With three children, um, I was one of the lucky ones. Mm -hmm because um, my mother, like I said, she did child care. Mm -hmm. So my mother helped me so much with my kids, it was like having a nanny. Mm -hmm. So I turned into my dad <laughs> and worked two jobs and um, she would be there with the kids. And uh, I can't say that I was a single parent, only until I met the boy's dad. Okay. Um, Tamisa, I had her by when I was 21 years old. 21. Okay. Yeah. From a five-year relationship. Okay. So, um, after that, when she was probably about three, turning three, I met the boy's dad. Okay. So, you so, had a girl and two, and two and boys. two boys. Okay. Yeah. So... And they have the same father. Okay. So, um, I would say our household was kind of like my, my mother and father's household, mm -hmm. like my household. Like, when I talk about dysfunction, um, I mean, like, all the fights, all the, you know, screaming and hollering at each other mm -hmm. and um, doing whatever it takes to uh, pay the bills, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that, you know. My father worked two jobs, but he still had a hustle. Mm -hmm. He still was going to hustle. Right. My, my, he just didn't hustle drugs. Mm -hmm. My kids' father, you know, was a different, he was just a straight hustler, you know. Mm -hmm. And I used to always, and I tell females now, I try to tell females now, I used to always get into arguments with Tamisa's father mm -hmm. and um, about not taking care of her, like not helping me right. financially. Mm -hmm. And um, Robert, you know, stepped up and said, listen, if the man can't do it, the man can't do it. I'm here, so she, she's going to get taken care of. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we went from there. 
Me and Robert was together for like 10 years. Okay. And then we broke up. So then after that, I was basically a single mother. Okay. Because um, I was spoiled by him. Like far as bills and car payments and stuff like that, I never paid them. So one day I woke up after 10 years and I was a single mother paying all the bills. So I, I was... Managing a, de a deli in Eastern called the um, De Luigi Deli. Mm -hmm. I managed that for like ten years, and um, the owner was he he was like a brother to me, an older brother, mm -hmm. you know. So he took care of me. But when I the best day of my life when I accepted Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. I had to leave the deli. And I had to leave the relationship. Now, wow. some people say, um, why do people say that? Why can't you be with the person? Just because you got saved. And mm -hmm. just got, um, I'm going to tell you, it wasn't easy and it wasn't right away. It's just I know that wrong. the dysfunction and the turmoil got worse for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The 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 um war warfare, mm -hmm. it was it was crazy. It was like um. Almost went to jail. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. two times. Like I I I'm I'm so blessed that I'm not in Muncie right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? From a reaction of somebody doing something right. bad to you or hurting your feelings or you know doing something that you think that shouldn't happen in a relationship. But see, we just be having relationships. We don't be having marriages. Right. So if you ain't in no marriage, that man or that woman don't belong to you. Right. So we think that they do, and we think that they're disrespecting us. So what do we do when you're not the type of person that's going to go out there and do the same thing or whatever? Mm -hmm. What you do? You fight. You react. Mm -hmm. You react. You know what I mean? And my reactions was uh, bad a couple times. You know what I mean? So, um, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm blessed to be, was blessed to be able to still have my children. Because um, the one time I could have killed all of them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I'm blessed. I was blessed to still have my children then. You know? And this is the reason why I say prayer work. I don't know who's out there and who's listening to this. But if you are going through something or if you can't stop, you know, if you got an anger situation, you know what I mean? This is what I can talk about. I can say the alcohol. I can say drugs and all that. But I, I've never had a problem with that. But I'm telling you what worked for me. And this is the reason why I agreed to do this um, session because... I know prayer works. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to tell, I wanted to be able to tell people how prayer works. That time when I was in that type situation and I thought I was going to jail. And uh, the next Sunday, what was it? The time after that? Yeah, the next Sunday, I went to church and I got, and after, after the preacher, it was a, visiting preacher. I don't know his name. I wish I knew his name. But I, I don't remember his name. And they prayed for people that had anger problems. Mm. You know what I mean? They prayed for people that snap. They Look prayed that. for people that <laughs> listen, I went up there and I let that man pray for me. He didn't ask me no questions. He just prayed. And after that time I have never been able to to get that angry again or to let something inside me over. you know mm -hmm. take over to where and I'm not I'm not I'm 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 going to put it right down to you today that it's people out there that that has spirits 
trying to control them. Like, mm-hmm. you can't let nobody disrespect you like that. You got to take hold of the situation. Mm-hmm. This situation is getting out of hand, so you got to take the situation and try to beat somebody into submission. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. And that spirit will still try to come on me today with somebody disrespect me. Mm-hmm. And But I know today that if I ever did the things that I did back then, that I'm going to jail. Like, and that's just plain and simple, you know. And it should be nothing that that's that bad that make you go lose your character. children, right. go out of character, lose your children, and go to jail. So it wasn't right away, but because things got so bad, I backslid. And it, and it wasn't that I had I was angry with God or anything mm-hmm. like that. It was just that things was a lot different when I got saved than when I wasn't saved. It was a lot different. Like I thought all my friends that they were saved, um, people that meant a lot to me, mm-hmm. they were saved. And when me as thinking as a saved person, I'm thinking of a person like my grandmother was. My grandmother, Sarah, I mean, my grandfather and my grandmother, Sarah and Porter Bryant, they both were ministry, was in ministry. So they both were ministers. So my grandma, I'm sure she said, everybody said, mm-hmm. but the way she lived her salvation life, it was holiness. So we, when we got taught about Jesus, we got taught about holiness. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not the Ten Commandments, but holiness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The the you know, love thy neighbor, do right. unto Edge others if right. you want to do unto you. So, but it was a way that you were supposed to present yourself, and it was, a way, it was a character that you were supposed to have, and it was supposed to be like Christ. So, that's what I that's what I see a Christian as. Mm-hmm. You know, so. It seemed like, I ain't going to say look down. I ain't even going to say judge because the people around me, they wasn't really like that. But it just seemed like you wasn't living your, if you wasn't living like that, you wasn't living your life right. Mm -hmm. And I had the friends that that did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they wanted to come out of character. And you'd be like, oh, no, you can't come out of character because (laughs) you got to be the same one. You got, you know, you got to be the one that we come to for prayers and this, 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 and that. But when I, once I got saved and I thought we were all going to like be together all the time, going to church services all the time, like this, this, you know, this, this, and that. But when I, I was still disconnected as I was before I got saved. Mm-hmm. So I was like, this ain't, you know. Well, it's cracked up to be. Yeah, this ain't, <laughs> this ain't what it cracked up, you know, this ain't what it cracked up to be because some, sometimes people be doing stuff like, what you do in the world, so you get confused. Mm-hmm. You you get like, okay, well, they say, well, what's wrong with this? It's okay. Um, God, fix God loves me. God, God loves my heart. Right. God knows your heart, <laughs> this, 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 and that. So, you know, you get confused. And I ain't even going to lie to you. Sometime now, um, when I hear a pastor preach on grace and... I'm not saying that when he's preaching that he's preaching the wrong words, but it's but the audience out there, you know, the audience out there might get might get the part where you still got to walk up with God, you still mm-hmm. got to walk straight up with God, you still got to obey Him, you still got to you know know your um commi- you know your commitment to God. So I just get. Confused, I'm like, oh, he's telling these people that they can do this, that, this, this, that, and different this still, perspective. Yeah, that he's, he's really still going to, right. they still going to have it. You know what I'm saying? But some of them, I don't get that other part where they say um, that um, you got to live right. I don't, you know. So it's like, you know, okay, yeah, I understand that part. I'm glad that I have grace. Thanks, thank God, because I mess up. Mm-hmm. But I know to get it straight, to repent, 
do 360 and not go back to that thing. Right. You know? Learn from But it. what do you see in a, how, what type of world? You, you want to be a Christian. You want to you you want to change your life. I'm talking to somebody out there that that want to change your life. Um, it's not a hard thing. I'm not saying that it's a hard thing, but I'm saying you, it has to be a change. And you're like, so if there's no change, how are you saved? Oh, because you said the words. No. It's, it's 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 it has to be a change. So if you're not changed, then. You have to ask yourself that question, you know, mm-hmm. are you truly saved? Are you truly in Christ? Right. Okay, you love Jesus. You 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 post on Facebook every morning. You put a prayer up every morning. You do what What's you do. What's your relationship? Right. What's your? It, it has to be a relationship. And if you're in relationship with somebody, you know doing well. You want them to respect you. Mm-hmm. You want them to, you don't want to hurt their feelings and you don't want them to hurt your feelings. Right. So you're not going to go out of character and you're not going to do what you want to do and you're not going to do the things that's unpleasant to your partner. Right? Right. So we're in a partnership with Jesus. So that's how we have to live our life. So what was your relationship with your children when you had the transition, you know, being with someone for 10 years and then distancing, distancing yourself from that type of atmosphere? What was your relationship with your children? Did they follow you or did they want to be with their, you know, their father? Well, um, even though the boy's dad had cut off financially help, mm-hmm. I can't say he was a deadbeat. Because of the fact that um, they went with him every weekend, and a lot, like a, he would come get them in the summertime, a lot. Mm-hmm. So basically, it was almost like split custody, mm-hmm. whatever, without going to the courts, because going to the courts didn't get me anywhere. So like co-parenting. Yeah. Okay. So going to the courts didn't get me anywhere. Now, to me, so she might have been like. Out of the loop mm-hmm. because once you know Rob was gone, that stepped in her place as a dad. You know, her dad was still kind of messed up, mm-hmm. but thank God he got himself together. Mm-hmm. When she turned 16, he he had really got himself together, okay. And but he lived in um York, but we had each other. Let's go into the day where you actually got that phone call. What happened? Or what happened before that day? Did you know anything? Like what was what was um your child your children going through in school? Like were they did they have behavior problems? Were they good kids? Like what happened that day when you got that phone call? August thirty first. And you still mm-hmm. you still go back to the day he was born. Mm-hmm. I thank God for letting me let me have him um, seventeen years of his life, but to have somebody for seventeen years and they get snatched away from you, and it's never easy. It's never easy if you give birth and the baby die, mm-hmm. or your son is fifty and you eighty, right. and your son died before you. Nobody wants to die before their kids ever. Nobody wants to die. This it's the horriblest thing in the whole wide world to me, you know. And um, I, I, you know, still to this day, it was fifteen years. It would be fifteen years in November. Okay. And um, wow. I still say to God, I want my baby. God. Why did it have to be, not that, why did it have to be my baby, but why after the, the, literally the, I feel as though the, the childhood that I had, that I didn't touch base on, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because that's just um, the lifestyle that I, I, it was the life that the tests and stuff from God that I had to go through mm-hmm. to be the woman that I am. Mm-hmm. If if I didn't overcome when my dad died, 
the emptiness, like I had an emptiness always I had an emptiness all the way from when my dad died. Mm -hmm. I kind of blinked out of the world when my dad died. I thought I was gonna die when my dad died. You know, I literally tried to jump in the in the in the grave because I just always felt alone after my dad died. Mm -hmm. Like he was the only one that had my back. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, as I stated, that my mom helped me take care of my kids and stuff like that. But it's a it's a different thing. Like You're the a love, daddy's girl. yeah. I was a daddy's girl, and it's different. It's a different type of of relationship. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With your, with you know, like if you're in a household and one of your parents are your hero. Mm -hmm. And that's for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um. So you felt empty again when you lost your son. You, you like, like I lost my father. What people think is natural, but not at 15 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, not at not at 14 going on. 15. Well, I just turned 15. Not at 15 years old. It's it's not. It's like... That could be detrimental to a female. Mm -hmm. To be a daddy's girl. And then you're always comparing the guys that try to come talk to mm -hmm. you as your dad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With your dad. You're always... Um, I never look for a father figure, though. You know how they say some people, some females? I think the ones that didn't grow up with fathers look for someone, for a father figure. I think yeah, I didn't need a father the, figure because to had, me, I had the best father, father in the world. world right. So I didn't, you know, it wasn't that. You weren't, you weren't missing that. Mm -mm. So I wasn't, um, you know, acceptable to have, you know, some females that didn't have a father or whatever. So... You know, I think the t the lessons that my father taught me and how he worked, his work ethics and mm -hmm. stuff like that, it really made me strong. Right. You know, it really, you know, it really made me. It molded you into the woman that you right. became. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I did not know that um, it was God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying my father made me into a strong woman. No, he guided me. Mm hmm but the strength from that, I didn't know at that time that I kept on living. But I kept on living, but I was in a shell. I, like, my heart wouldn't harden. Like, you know how some people hard, harden their heart and they be evil? Mm -hmm. My heart, I just got, I just had a shell on me that I had to be bold. And I had to be able to... Um, deal with anything, but I didn't. I didn't deal with it. I just always, always threw it in the back. Mm -hmm. And basically, I think I would have did that. I kind of did that with my son, mm -hmm. but um, I know that it's God, you know, strength. Mm -hmm. I remember um, after he died, I had no strength. Mm -hmm. I, like, trying to get the funeral together, Trying to, um, you know, put it together. I don't. Re I don't remember none of that. I just remember my pastor and them asking me questions like, "Who do you want in the obituary? Who mm -hmm. do you want?" You know. All I know Speaking is of. that I woke up in the morning, and it was a whole cloud all day long. People coming in and out of your house. Mm -hmm. And um, getting asked certain questions. I mean, I was, I was. Thank God that I had. Well, my my uh, apostle, he's my first cousin. Mm -hmm. So him. And, so you had a support team. Yeah, right? I had a support. Okay. Yeah, okay. so they put the whole funeral together, and I just was like, okay, I answered questions. You know, mm -hmm. I had my policies, so mm -hmm. it wasn't an issue. So how was your children? What were they going through? All my nieces and nephews is like one of my kids. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's like, it's, it's just, so it's, you know, so now it's him and now it's him. And then I lost like aunts and uncles, you know, they're, they were older, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I, I don't, I don't like to see anybody sick for a long period of time. I don't, mm 
Mm-hmm. So when they pass, I'd be like, I really, my aunt, she was the holiest woman that I ever knew in my whole life. To me, she, she surpassed my grandma, my aunt Eleanor. Mm-hmm. And um, she was um, bed, I heard you say, I want to say bedridden, but she was in the bed, and she was a God-fearing woman. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I was just like, God, she's just waiting to come with you. She's just waiting to go to heaven. <laughs> like, she just, she's just, you know, waiting. Mm-hmm. And then I was thinking, like, maybe he had, was, had her there that, you know, that she could still, and she was, she still was ministering to people. Mm-hmm. They were calling her on the phone. They were going to see her and stuff like That's that. Awesome. And, um, but she had enough strength, the boy, the, um, the boys would will her into the church, but she, when she passed, that was a peace for me because, mm-hmm. first of all, I know where she's going. Second of all, I know she wanted to get there ever since she was a little girl. She's been saved all her life. Mm-hmm. My mom and them did whatever they wanted to do with their life. And then some of my aunts and them, they came back to God. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because, like I said, my grandparents were ministers. Mm-hmm. But this aunt, she never stepped out the will of God. She mm-hmm. never she never stepped out. Everybody sins in a certain type of way. Right. But she never stepped out the will of God. So that was a different type feeling when somebody died. You don't want to see them suffering. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And my uncle, I didn't want to see him suffering. My uncle right. did But... When a kid dies, you can go later. Because I'm going to tell you why it's probably better to go later. Because once the funeral's over, they don't see anybody anymore. You don't see anybody anymore after the funeral's over. Mm. When the smoke's clear, you're sitting there by yourself. I didn't think about that. You are. I mean, you get some friends that text you and be like, mm-hmm. how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. This, you know, this, this, and that. But before Facebook came out, and you could put you could put it on Facebook, like their anniversary mm-hmm. or their this this and that, and then people come in there and they be like, "I'm right. praying for you." This you didn't have none of that before. Mm-hmm. So the only time you seen them was in the grocery stores or right. or the you know the family dollar mm-hmm. or this and that, Bypass. and they say something to right. you. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so with the Facebook now, people you know I put something up for Rob and I got like I don't know how many how many hits or whatever, but um, when I put that up, it wasn't about, um, I'm not going to say it wasn't about a sadness, but um, I want them to know I'm not stuck. I'm not stuck back there, you know, because I got them, I had to move on. Mm-hmm. I was forced to move on. Mm-hmm. When the this is a whole nother story. When the kid, when the gang of kids tried to kill my son Joel, so now my one son is dead, and the kids in the neighborhood that supported me and came to Rob's funeral and did this and that, this and that, and said we got Joel, blah blah blah, turned on him, and now they wanted to kill him because he was friends with somebody that they wanted to kill. They didn't have no beef with him, for real, for real. The only beef they had with him was that he, he was, was friends, friends with, somebody the, else. with the somebody with the other person. They were saying they were gonna kill me. They were gonna come in the in the, in the church and kill me while I was putting my money in the in the in the collection plate. All this and that. So I didn't want Joe there. So I moved to Delaware. The people that you think is gonna be there for you. When that smoke clear, it's, 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 and it's not that they don't love you, you know, it's just that life goes on right. and people don't, people don't, they don't, they don't stay in that place. That's mm-hmm. why we can't stay in that place. That's you know what I mean? Because you'll point. get a hardened heart. Mm-hmm. You really would, you know, I wasn't, when I first went down, I wasn't eating. I wasn't doing nothing. Now I had the, the heaviness of Rob. Mm-hmm. Then I had the heaviness of thinking if they kill Joe, I'm not going to have Joe. Right. That's tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, and my daughter, she's already going through about Rob, mm-hmm. and now she's worried about um, Joe. Brother, right. Yeah. It, I mean, it was a horrible thing, wow. you know? So I have one son dead and one son that, are, that people in the city still want to kill. 
So I'm telling you, if you don't if you don't find peace in God, that you won't have no you won't have no mind. You won't have no mind. You'll forget things. You'll forget a word in the middle of saying it. You'll, your whole mind. And so I know in the um, timeline you wanted to touch on, did I get help afterwards or treatment? Yeah, did you get any treatment um, during this time? It's been 15 years. Have you thought about getting treatment? How, do, how, do, how, how are you now I mean, in life? Now in life, like I said, you still got to fight. Mm -hmm. But no, I didn't get treatment. And um, the reason why I didn't get treatment is because I thought if I go there and I break, I didn't know if I was going to come back to be able to be strong for my kids. Mm. So I just put my, I just put it on the altar mm -hmm. and I just put it in God. Mm -hmm. And that's where my, that's where my strength has came from. Now, do I think that I need it? Um, I might need it now because of all the trauma, like the stuff with Rob and the stuff with Joel. I might, you know, I might need it now and I'll be okay because my daughter's okay now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Joel's kind of okay now. We still go through it, but mm -hmm. they okay. They out the house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to worry about if I break or if they see me crying or if they see weak, me screaming. Right. They have never seen me do it. Mm-hmm. They have never seen me do it except for the funeral. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. my daughter would sit outside in the in the car and cry, so I wouldn't see her. Joe would just act out. That was his thing. That he was just, his way of yeah. expressing he just act, himself. Yeah, right. he just act out. And it's, I mean, you know, that's so. I would advise people that if if you got a chance to get to go get help, yeah, go talk to somebody. Go. Mm -hmm. You know, go get that support, especially if the support team that you had around the front, Fruital Town mm -hmm. time is gone. Yeah, go go do that. Go do that because it's helping my sister a lot. And she, she goes, lost her son as yeah. well. Wow. Yeah, and she's strong. I, well, I can't say she's stronger in Christ, but I, I, I can say it if I want to say it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel as though that she's stronger in Christ. She's been in, in the in, um, say way longer than me and stuff like that. So she could have just leaned on. She could have just took hers to God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But um Everybody heals differently too. Yes, right. everybody heals differently. So she went and it seems like she and she's like, Putty, I think you should go. <laughs> but the thing of it is, is am I ready to break down? Mm. I mean you How break down. How do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel as though that you're ready now? Uh sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. You know, but now I can't because I have the baby. So if I go there and break down, like I feel as though if I break down, everything I I I'm a I'm her caretaker. Mm -hmm. I'm my mother's eighty seven year old mother's caretaker, Everything's seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So it's like God puts stuff in my life that make me so busy that or make me have to stay focused that the devil is never gonna win with this thing. Unless I isolate myself. Allow him to. Right. If I, I, I isolate myself, please, whatever you ever do, do not isolate yourself. I don't care if people are not coming around or do nothing like that. Do what I do. I have a church. I have um, a, a church. Mm -hmm. I have. I can go there on Sundays and see my members or mm -hmm. anything like that. You know what I mean? And they they constantly ask you how you doing you know and stuff like that and some even want to you know um link up with you you know because they might see that you're strong mm -hmm. and that and they might need your strength for something, something else. else right you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then there's people like and then i love to work with children now my thing is boys but how i landed in this girl club <laughs> <laughs> i don't know because i was trying to get out to the prison to volunteer at the the youth prison, mm -hmm. and um, I forget what was going on. It was like kind of crazy, and it, like as getting um, clearance and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I went with the girls, I got my granddaughter, and I got clearance like right away. Mm -hmm. So now I'm there with the girls. I can't say, "Oh, I got clearance. I'm gonna leave the girls." Right, you've already been committed to what you're doing now. Yeah, That's so. I went there to start a drill team, and we, we did a little bit of that. And then we ended up, before we took our summer break, we ended up doing the Book of Daniel. 
That's good. And how that I was able to, um, I was, God surprises me all the time. How I was able to break it down into with the older girls that's getting ready to go to college on standing your ground and, you know, um, if that, somebody's doing something wrong, you don't have to do that or anything like that. And the way I was able to break it down to them um, to understand what Daniel was going through and what Daniel was doing and the stuff that's going on in your life and how, you know, people are going to, you know, try to use you for your gifts right. and stuff like that. And they was really liking it and they was really understanding it. You know, and coming back asking questions and all kind of stuff like that. So it ended up being that I was teaching, Just which I know was what, right. which is one of my callings. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm excited. I'm kind of excited to um to get back into it. That's good. That's good. Well, thank you, Kim, for coming out with us today, um, and expressing your testimony in regards to losing your son and how you was raised and uh, how you're living life now and the blessing that God has put upon you with your strength. Um, thank you listeners for actually listening in to us today. Uh, be sure to like, share, and comment. Follow us on Twitter, uh, Instagram at Uncommon Three Women and Facebook Uncommon Women. If y'all have any topics that y'all would like us to talk about, uh, please feel free to email us at uncommonwomenpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we're also looking for any events for vendors, and we're also still looking for poets for the rest of season two. Thank you, listeners, and please remember to stay uncommon.